Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. Uh, this time I thought I'd have a go at fitting uh, an SRAM. Now, I've got some Dallas uh, chips. I think they're Dallas chips. I'll have a look in a minute. Um, yeah, I've got some Dallas chips that I've had sat around for ages, actually, in my component drawer. Um, I bought a job lot of them. I think I've got four or five, I might have six uh, smaller chips and a couple of larger chips. Uh, but I think the smaller ones have probably got the same pin profile as uh, you know the ROM slots on this, you know, the ROM sockets, I should say, on a BBC. So I'm thinking one of those would work. Now I did a little bit of research over on the Stardot forums, and the standard uh, approach is to use a 62256 chip, uh, 32k, um, and you just split it. You know, so you have two 16k blocks there. And you just need to run a couple of wires to different points on the board. One for the right enable and one for the chip select or something I think or the upper address, it might be the upper address line so ultimately I'll probably go for something a bit more elegant for like sideways RAM and ROM, you can get a board that kind of sits in the CPU socket and it's got a battery on there for holding settings and things and it's got some flash you know so you can uh, flash your ROMs and things, multiple ROMs go up to 16 uh, you know, slots and capability but it also has 128k of RAM uh, but in the meantime I thought why not have a go with these, I've got a bunch of these uh, Dallas uh, chips here uh, now other people have used the DS1230Y I'm using the AB I'm guessing it should be alright I think it's just about the speed I guess um, so we'll, yeah, we'll have a go at this. These are, as you can see, non-volatile SRAM. Uh, so it's got the same footprint here, the same dip footprint. It's a bit of a larger package. So I'm guessing this is a bit like the Dallas real-time clocks. It's perhaps got a, a lithium uh, battery in there, perhaps. Uh, so these have never been used, brand new. Um, I've got, like I say, a bunch of these. And I've got two more of those, and I've got some larger ones. They're uh, 128k, I think. So what we need to do is create a couple of wires up actually with clips to go to a couple of different ICs on the board. One of them is uh, the latch, I think. Um, is it IC74? Can't, it might be IC76, I can't remember, we'll look at that in a minute. But also the right enable pin needs to go to uh, pin 1 on IC14, I think. Uh, so, yeah, how am I going to do that? Well, I'll probably need to bend the pin out and solder wire onto each one. Uh, just need to make sure that when I push it in it doesn't make a connection with the socket. But we'll have a go. Um, I think Exile is one of those games that should auto detect RAM, so we could try that. But also Astro Blaster, which I want to use with the speech chip uh, when that arrives. And well, I've got a speech chip here, but it's a faulty one, I think. So when the legit working ones arrive, um, hopefully we should have uh, in-game speech with that. So the right enable's coming out there to the existing clip I already had uh, ready here. Uh, and you can see, you know, the, the way these work, you just pull the housing off the back and you've got the little contact there, the copper bit, the bit you want to solder onto. Because uh, the other part of it is probably not going to uh, hold the solder unless you scratched it up and added a ton of flux. But if we just get uh, a blob of solder there like that, turn up the ends of our wire here. There we go. Uh, and then simply just join this on here. That's it. Wet finger. And then if we feed the wire through there, it should now slide over. There you go. As you can see, we can now use that to clip onto the other pin there on the uh, on IC76, I think it is. Um, so we'll just turn up the other end and join it up. Now, the thing I'm not sure about is these legs sticking out the sides here. Is this going to interfere? Well, it will do, depending on where it is. It could bend them up the side of the chip here, but just to start with, before I do that, commit to bending them even further. Uh, I'd like to just test it and see if it works, even if it means removing one of the ROMs that's in there. I'll perhaps re remove the uh, dual Arkanoid and uh, that Kong clone that I forget the name of. Uh, and obviously heat shrink is uh, going to be something I will perhaps do as a final thing there just to you know commit and make that tidy and secure um, but that should at least allow me to test it what I do need to do though is just make sure these are isolated in such a way that when I push it in they're not going to make a, a join uh, to the socket below so I might just take, take temporarily tape a little piece of tape over each of those just so that those don't uh, interfere with the socket actually so for the moment I've just got a piece of tape isolating the pin there and then this one's just coming out that way. Pin 1 can go straight into the socket edge there, that's not a problem actually, it doesn't do anything. Um, 
you know, it's not connected to anything on the board. So, uh, and I've extended the wire here. Originally I had a shorter wire. I think it was going to a different IC, it was going to IC14. And actually, the right enable pin needs to go to IC77. So I'll connect that up in a minute, I'll show you. I think it's pin 8, uh, and it was uh, Mac1024, or is it 1024 Mac? I forget. I'll stick his name up here, but uh, yeah, he's uh, one of the nice guys there uh, over on um, Stardot Forum. And if you're going to do anything with the BBC, I'd suggest you join the Stardot Forum, actually, because there's an awful lot of experts on there. Uh, people that are very passionate about the BBC and have got a wealth of, uh, you know, decades of experience uh, modding and supporting and upgrading and developing software and stuff for the BBC. There's loads of uh, techies over there. Um, so, yeah, well worth joining that forum. So, if I just slide into the socket, there we go, it's a pretty good fit. Um, and then as I say, the red wire, this is the uh, right enable. I'm going to label these up in a minute with the pin number and what it is, just so it's obvious because, uh, you know, at some point when I take these off, I'll forget where they went. In one guide, it suggested connecting this right enable here to pin 1 on IC14. Now, that worked with, um, what's it called, Astro Blaster. Um, you know, that detected the additional RAM there. But Exile hung every single time. I couldn't get it to work. And then I followed 1024 Max advice of using IC77 down here, uh, up here I should say, at pin 8. So that's where our right enable is going to go. And you can see these are just these scope probe clips, you know, they're really cheap off eBay. Uh, and they're just really useful for mods like this, where you don't want to solder a permanent wire. Uh, and then the other pin just needs to come across to um, IC76 here. Um, we're going for the fourth one up. And I think the select line here, depending on which one you use, det determines which bank it's in. So you can, I think, play around with that as well. Uh, now I've not got the, uh, what's it called, the DFS ROM in here at the moment. Uh, and I think that has a couple of utilities, it's got some sideways RAM load and save utilities there. So I'll have to get that at some point. So what I've done, I've ordered from uh, a different guy, I'll stick his uh, name up here. An EEPROM ROM board at 64K, so it will hold four slots, you know, four ROMs. Uh, and I'll use that to swap out for the Arkanoid ROM that I had. This chip here. Uh, now, the interesting point with that is I just pulled the jumper off and connected up using little uh, clips here to the that upper address line, in the, which is in the middle of that jumper set there. And then I linked it across to the next connection down here on IC76 and lo and behold uh, when I did at H dot you know to list what's on you know what the system can see in terms of ROMs um, both games were available so you can you know you could do that I don't actually need the jumper it did strike me that I could remove the jumper and just have a wire from the upper address line uh, to here perhaps with another crop clip you know to disconnect it um, so the whole jumper thing that we showed in part two was it I think yeah it was nice to test with but uh, that jumper's moved doesn't it yeah, so the whole jumper thing we showed in uh, part two there, you don't actually need to do that. You can just have a wire coming off and go into this chip here to specify which um, you know which you want. And they're, both, they're automatically there, is the point I'm trying to make. You don't need to mess around manually change anything. So that's really interesting. And I don't want to mention it, but the standard chip you can use here is a 62256. I've just gone with the Dallas uh, DS1230AB, uh, because like I say, I've got a load of those. Uh, other people have used the DS1230Y. Um, I'm not quite sure what the difference is between them. And this is a Dash 100. So, yeah, speed could be an issue. I think a lot of the more modern ones are Dash 70s. But I would assume that on something like this, Dash 100 is probably okay, I would think. I mean, I've not had any problems with it, that's for sure. But the nice thing with this, because this has got the battery in there, I could use the sideways utilities once I get the EEPROM in here, the 64K, and one of the ROM images I'll have the uh, you know the DFS, the disk filing system, or whatever it is, you know, uh, and then I can use the sideways loading software to fill these the two slots here with other ROMs, and after I switch it off and on, they should still be there. Now I might need to do a mod then to protect the right enable. You know, because at the moment you could write to this and it will just get initialized or written over. Um, but in theory, I could have a switch there, you know, again, externally available or something, so that I can actually disable the write enable to make this a ROM. The, the data in there is stored by the uh, battery, so that's quite cool. But for the moment, I'm just going to take that uh, Arkanoid and um, Killer Gorilla ROM out, because, yeah, I'll just put it to the side for testing. It's useful just to quickly stick into another beam at some point in future to test it out but I have no plans on overwriting it or anything I'll just get a replacement 64k EE prompt chip for there. So we can access that RAM with one of Tricky's games actually. Um, 
it's going to be the first of a few of these that I show. He's done some fantastic projects for the uh, BBC, who really knows? Um, so this was an arcade game that he created. Can you see down here, it's using sampled speech with two sideways run banks. Let's turn up a bit because you can't hear that very well. Press return again, you should hear it again. So yeah, sampled speech there with two sideways uh, run chips. That's what I can find. Now, this game actually supports the TMS 5220 as well. So in the next video, I'll show you that. But if I load Exile, that should detect the extra run as well. So here we go in Exile. If I press Return, menu should come up. And if we press F0, may I use your sideways run? Yes, you may. And we should get some speech, I think. Yeah, a bit fuzzy, but sampled speech, and that works nevertheless. Fantastic. So as you can see, I'm using a utility here from boobip.com. Now, this is going to be the next video because I've got a couple of other chips here that I'll show you in that video. Primarily, it's for using sideways EEPROM and uh, RAM. Um, but what we can do is copy, um, use this utility, I think, to copy um, one of the ROMs there into that new SRAM. Now, you'll notice showing four blocks there. After connecting up here, we've got four blocks shown and it's because it kind of um, you've got some mirroring going on you know when the slots are empty there you just get the same chips shown at other locations so that's why it's showing four copies of basic four copies of dfs the dfs is the uh, mmc super mmc chip basic obviously is basic but we've got four lots of each of those showing up and four lots of the sram because i've only got the three chips in there i think that's my understanding of how it works anyway so what I'm going to do is plug the Arknoid ROM into one of the sockets, load the software up again, I'll show you that now. So there we go, now we've got the Arknoid in there, that is replicated four times as well actually, so you've got everything replicated four times there by the looks of things. Um, so if we press uh, question mark it should tell us the options, so we need to press R to read a ROM image, so we press I again. Uh, and then we press, which one do we want to read? We want to read one, one, which is Arknoid. Read one. So Arknoid is now in RAM. If we press, uh, uh, and if we press question mark again, to program a ROM image, we press P and then the bang. So if we go back, bear in mind we've got Arknoid in uh, the system RAM at the moment. Let's stick it into slot zero. So we'll do P zero. I to do another list, and as you can see, We've now got Arkanoid in the SRAM there. Now, because this is non-volatile, what should happen when I switch this off and list it again? So this has been powered off, and if we run that again, you can see we've still got Arkanoid there. And what I'm going to do now is switch off again, remove the Arkanoid chip. So as you can see, I've got Arkanoid out. Um, press break, pull you up. Yeah, sorry, I know it's really over bright. The weather is uh, making it incredibly hot in here, but it's also making it uh, very, very bright as well. Um, and if we load our tool again, we should have, there you go, Arkanoid in slot zero. Now, that's brilliant. You know, it's like I say, it's held it even when the system's been powered off. So I've got kind of like a nice way of flashing the ROMs to those two. RAM banks there, or I can use them as RAM. Uh, if I was to load a game now, that uh, well, which will ask me whether I want to use that RAM or not, it will overwrite it. But if I now do at Arkanoid, you'll see the game loads straight from that non-volatile RAM. Fantastic. There will be a part four of the uh, BBC sort of repair series in general, just where I show you the case and stuff. Uh, I may include the fans in that part as well. Uh, because otherwise it'll be a bit light, because what I've decided to do is split things up. As you can see here, I've got the uh, the Boobip chips in here, so I'll cover those in the next video perhaps. And I've also got the speech chip in here, I've got a couple of different speech chips. That wasn't plain sailing, I ended up with uh, a different chip here as you can see, so I'll cover that in a video in its own right as well. 
I'm sorry it's been a bit over bright in this video. It's been super hot. It really has the last few weeks. Super bright in here. Um, and that was the main reason for adding these fans, but that's going to be covered in a separate video. But yeah, I apologise for the noise that these have made during the back end of this video. But hopefully there's been uh, something of interest there. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.